DC residents are hitting the polls to vote for America's next president. But also on the ballot this year is a referendum on whether DC should become a state or keep its special status as a federal district under jurisdiction of Congress. Though referendum B is not legally binding, Josh Burke, a native Washingtonian and local activist, hopes that it will bring DC one step closer to statehood and to equal voting rights for its residents. We just want what everyone else in the country wants. We pay taxes, we serve in the military, um, we work hard, we have jobs. Um, we're American citizens except for on election day. And so what we want is full and equal representation and we want to have autonomy over our own local affairs. Today, Josh is joining fellow activists at a neighborhood polling place to convince voters to vote yes to referendum B. As the 51st U.S. state, Washington, D.C. would no longer have to submit its laws or budget to Congress for approval and would take control of its court system, currently paid for by the federal government. I came from New Jersey, the state of New Jersey, and I'm a poli-sci person, so it's important to me, politics and policy. And it was very hard for me to pick Washington, D.C. to live here because there's no representation. I would not have any representation in Congress, and for me that meant a lot. Last year, nearly three in four district voters were in favor of statehood, according to a Washington Post poll. But even if referendum B passes, Congress will need to take action for statehood to become law. For Roger Pilon of the Cato Institute, a libertarian think tank in Washington, the endeavor is a lost cause. It strikes me as a fool's errand, to be blunt, to pursue it when the odds are so stacked against it adding two Democratic senators and one Democratic representative to Congress when the country is so deeply divided is simply beyond comprehension. Facing many hurdles, statehood activists may need to find support beyond DC for their vision to become a reality.